As a teenager growing up in the 80s, the main reason I was aware of the name BASF was due to the fact that they were one of the more common brands of blank cassettes which were available at the time. As any self-respecting teenager of the era, I would have my Walkman, spare batteries, bag of tapes, ready for bus and train rides, free periods at college, or any time you felt like just tuning out and listening to some music. Although I knew that the company was German, I had no idea that BASF were in fact primarily a chemical company. BASF stands for Badisch Anilin und Soderfabrik. It's also an old company, being founded all the way back in 1865. As a teenager, I was also completely unaware of the enormous blast which occurred at the BASF factory in Oppau in 1921, even though it is one of the most devastating explosions ever to have occurred on European soil. Founded in 1865 in Mannheim, Germany, the BASF company originally produced alkaline sodas and various acids for use in dye works. By the early 20th century, BASF had grown into an industrial behemoth, producing all manner of chemicals and fertilisers, as well as diversifying into other areas such as photography, clothing and even mining. The factory located in Oppau, on the bank of the River Rhine, just north of Ludwigshafen, sprawled over 8 hectares and, at the time, employed about 8,000 people. It was opened in 1911 to produce fertilisers, of which the most common ones produced were ammonium sulphate and potassium chloride. However, during World War I, as supplies of sulphur became scarce due to its use in ammunitions, the factory had to adapt, and so it began to produce large quantities of ammonium nitrate as well. By the final days of World War I, Allied blockades had brought Germany to the edge of starvation, and so the production and use of fertiliser was seen as of a paramount importance for German industry, and for the rebuilding of the nation as a whole. Fertiliser, being used mainly on a seasonal basis, requires storage, and thus the Oppau factory not only produced massive amounts of fertiliser, but it also stored it on site too, in huge silos constructed to house the mountains of fertiliser which were being stockpiled in reserve. Now, it was well known that ammonium nitrate was potentially explosive, but testing by the chemists had shown that a 50-50 mix of ammonium nitrate and ammonium sulphate created a seemingly stable, non-combustible mixture, which they nicknamed Mischsalz. This harmless mixture could be safely housed in the vast storage silos at the Oppau factory, where provisions were made to store it in enormous batches. The largest silo was able to house an incredible 50,000 tonnes at any one time, there was one problem though. Ammonium nitrate is hygroscopic in nature, meaning that it attracts moisture, and being stored in such huge quantities, this led to its own set of difficulties. The weight of the damp mischsalz bearing down on itself often caused the lower part of the mass to solidify, leading to a situation where workmen had to manually loosen the material with pickaxes if they were to stand any chance of getting the fertiliser out of the silo. Now this was dangerous work, it was more akin to mining an unstable rock face than it was working in a chemical factory, and many men had been injured whilst trying to break up the enormous masses. The question was, how could they make this work safer? The solution they came up with sounds on the face of it to be utterly reckless. The factory workers decided to loosen the solidified fertiliser via the use of small explosive blasting charges, which were drilled directly into the solidified ammonium sulfonitrate. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. What could possibly go wrong? Well, with the gift of hindsight, it's easy to be judgmental about it. But at the time, the workers had been assured that the 50-50 mix was completely inert, and that blowing it to pieces was indeed perfectly safe. As if to prove the point, there had been already over 20,000 controlled blasts in the fertiliser silos prior to the Oppau explosion. It seems to be one of them cases where everything is fine until the one day that it isn't. And that day was the 21st of September 1921. At just after 7.30 in the morning, a huge explosion tore through silo number 110, one of the smaller storage silos that contained around 4,500 tonnes of ammonium sulphonitrate. The consequences were utterly devastating. 
Within an instant, Silo 110 and most of the southern end of the factory were obliterated, leaving behind a crater which was 350 feet wide, 550 feet long and 60 feet deep. One of the three giant chimneys located at the factory power plant was blown away and fires broke out throughout the remainder of the complex. The small town of Opau, located just half a mile from the factory, fared little better. 80% of the buildings there were either completely destroyed or severely damaged. Damage was reported up to 50 miles away, with roofs ripped off houses and windows blown in. In Frankfurt, some 37 miles away, reports stated that the blast was powerful enough to overturn an electric tram in the middle of the road. Such was the size of this explosion that it was heard in Munich, which was about 185 miles away. What few eyewitness accounts we do have all said more or less the same thing. The sound of a powerful muffled blast, and moments later a huge fireball billowing into the sky. Next came loud crackling and roaring noises, followed by a darkness which quickly swept over the local area. The loss of life was appalling. It's estimated that between 550 to 600 people were killed instantly and over 2,000 were injured, with many of those injuries being described as serious. Over 7,000 people were left homeless, and it was, and to my knowledge still is, Germany's deadliest industrial accident. Incredibly, despite the destruction that was wrought, it's estimated that only 10% of the ammonium sulfur nitrate stored in Silo 110 actually exploded. The damage and loss of life had the whole amount gone up doesn't even bear thinking about, and if the explosion had have occurred in one of the bigger silos, which can remember could hold up to 50,000 tonnes, the magnitude of that explosion would have been on a scale that's almost impossible to imagine. So what had gone so terribly wrong? Why did that blasting on the morning of the 21st of September have such dreadful consequences when there had been over 20,000 prior instances where nothing had gone wrong? Well, despite the exhaustive inquiries that followed the Opau explosion, there's still no single definitive answer to that question. To begin with, there are obviously no surviving witnesses to the actual blasting that took place in the silo that day, so that we can't be certain that some mistake wasn't made with the amount of gunpowder or the way that the charges were placed. Even so, the pile of ammonium sulfur nitrate was supposed to be inert. Now, how would the chemists manage to get this basic fact so wrong? Well, the best guess as to what happened is as follows. In the months prior to the blast, a new spray drying technique had been implemented at the factory which was hoped would reduce the amount of clogging during production. One unintended byproduct of this new procedure was a fine powdery dust, which tended to float in the air and settle in drifts around the edge of the silo. This powder was later discovered to have a much higher ammonium nitrate concentration than the main bulk of the fertiliser, and although it accounted for only around 0.1% of the total mass, it might have been enough to trigger a chain reaction. When the workmen drilled that fateful morning, it's thought that they placed charges in an area at the edge of the silo, where the drifts of the fine powdery material had accumulated. Upon blasting, the fine powder ignited, in turn providing enough explosive energy to cause a portion of the main mass to combust. That result was 600 dead and thousands of people injured and made homeless. The Opau explosion made headlines around the world, and following the disaster, the BASF factory ceased production of ammonium nitrate for over 40 years, only resuming it when new anti-caking agents allowed for a much safer production process. The factory was rebuilt, and occupies the same site today, although the modern plant is in fact much bigger. It's now one of the largest chemical plants in the world, and employs some 33,000 people on site. Unfortunately, the Opau explosion is far from being a unique event in history. There are a score of terrible explosions involving ammonium nitrate, ranging from well-known historical disasters such as the Texas City explosion of 1947, to more recent ones such as the 2015 Tangin explosion and, of course, the 2020 Beirut Dockyard blast. 
One would hope that these hard lessons have finally been learned and that for once people's lives are put before unsafe storage just to save a few quid. But I'm not holding my breath. While doing the research for this video, I came across an article which asserted that there's a warehouse located on the outskirts of the Indian city of Chennai, which currently holds around 750 tonnes of old, decaying ammonium nitrate. Now, I don't know the accuracy of that assertion, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was true. And one thing's for sure, if it is true, you can bet that the owner of that 750 tonnes of old ammonium nitrate isn't living anywhere near that warehouse. 